Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm doing this session. I have recorded this actually uh, because of time constraints. So basically, continuing the discussion of the surgical group of NEET SS 2022. So a study comparing groups showed significant difference in outcome, but no difference. So it's a very straightforward question. And if they ask, mostly it should be a type one error. Now, if there was alpha type error, they it can also be a correct answer if there is any discrepancies in the question or in the options and please let me know but accordingly if there is a difference in the study but when there is actually no difference then it is a type 1 error now i'll be covering nearly 40 uh, odd questions in this discussion and the remaining will be covered in the next session so IL-2 is secreted by, so very straightforward question. So it is secreted by T cells. There is no much discussion here. Very commonly asked, IL-2 is the most favorite and they, they asked very often. Uh, most common cause for early prosthetic valve endocarditis. So this is usually, this is taken from the CTVS portion of Bailey. So as I told that Bailey from CTVS, Bailey is very, very important. They have asked multiple questions in this type. So the most common organisms for prosthetic valve endocarditis is Staphylococcus and most commonly it is Staph aureus which is seen in 50% of the cases. So the answer for this would be Staph aureus which is the most common cause of early prosthetic valve endocarditis. So in the neck there are three zones that is zone one is from the uh, sternal notch up to the level of cricoid from cricoid up to the angle of mandible and angle of mandible up to the base of the skull. This I discussed already in my videos. I expected some question from the maxillofacial and the neck region. So if a patient with a zone three injury who is asymptomatic from this algorithm, which I had already discussed. So if zone three, we go for a CT angiography, which should be the answer for this. Very straightforward. I have nobody has made mistakes in this. Zygoma fracture, one point fixation for accuracy. So this is a direct line from Bailey. So mainstay of treatment in the open reduction internal fixation is basically fixation of one of the four legs and that is the frontozygomatic suture that is a buttress region or in the infraorbital rim or the zygomatic arch. So namely it is the frontozygomatic arch which I think should be the answer which is the one point fixation for accuracy. If there is any discrepancy or in the option in this question, please let me know in the DM. Now, fascist syndrome, this is, I could not find it in Bailey's abyssin or short. So some questions are expected of such sort that you know, don't find it in any of the uh, books. So basically, fascist syndrome is standing for, they ask the ac acronym that is posterior fossa malformation, hemangioma, arterial anomalies, coarctation of aorta or cardiac defects, eye abnormalities and sternal malformation was further added. So initially it was face, now it is faces which was asked in, so here it should be posterior fascia malformation, hemangioma arterial anomalies, coactation, eye and sternal malformations. Renault phenomenon, very straightforward question. So it is basically color changes. That is, it is again taken from Bailey straightforward. So I have an observation that there was majority of the questions from Bailey and Sabiston. So stick to that. Don't go beyond that for neat SS. Very straightforward question. So initially, because of the sensitivity to cold, the vessels constrict. So it will become white. Then the blood usually capillary dilates and fills. So that is initially deoxygenated. So it will be blue. And then the arteriols relax and oxygenated blood comes. So then it becomes red. So the answer would be the white, blue and red. In patients with lung empyema, if post any kind of mycobacterial tuberculosis infection or an infective uh, infection, we have already tapped it. Then the patient is having recurrence. In that case, we should go for ICD drainage with IV antibiotics. So here, in taken from substance, if the patient is coming with, uh, it depends on the extent of the disease. So in uncomplicated drainage can be uh, achieved by a pigtail insertion if not done earlier. And in loculated, one catheter should be done in turbid, especially if very much like mycobacterial 
uh, tuberculosis infection or any other infection where it is turbid usually clinical practice we should apply the logic for this so in this i feel the answer should be icd with antibiotics if any discrepancies then please let me know resting venous pressure of the lower limb so this is taken from bailey so it is usually the venous system it contains the total blood volume 60 percent and the resting pressure in the lower limb is the resting pressure that is a column arising from the foot reaching up to the heart so it is between 5 to 10 millimeters of mercury or 5 to 7 millimeters of mercury and what we see is whenever there is movement then the pressure rises up to 150 to 200 millimeters of mercury that is due to the calf muscle pump but usually in the resting pressure is 5 to 7. Colodical cyst treatment now usually type 1 type 2 we go for uh, excision with a ruin by HJ 4 5 also excision with or without any hepatectomy and hepatic but in 3 it is that is colodococcele we go for endoscopic papillotomy or sphincterotomy we don't go for a transuodinal excision so that is incorrect if ever asked for type 3 colodocal cyst mass trace classification i'll already covered in the must know topic so that is the donor donor after circulatory death or failure that is dcd and mass trace class classification it classifies these donors into five categories i already covered in must know this topic is also very important transplant actually the transplant chapter of bailey is very 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 important questions are multiple times asked so never never miss that uh, chapter patient coming with csf rhinorrhea due to anterior cranial fossa fracture usually we go for a 7 to 10 days conservative management and usually they heal without intervention if there is no improvement next management is there is not much literature given either in bailey sabison or short so this is what i found from the articles so in this uh, the treatment is surgical management for the dura matter but endoscopic repair is what is commonly done nowadays in patients with csf rhinorrhea which is not treated by conservative management so according to me if question is asked like this the answer should be endoscopic repair for the dura matter for closing the defect so ipmn which is not a high risk feature so again i had covered this in the must know topic so this is a very important table so high risk features include main duct greater than 1 cm, enhancing mural nodule greater than 5 mm and jaundice. Now pancreatitis is among the worrisome feature. So that is not a high risk feature. That is a worrisome feature and that is what should be the answer. So worrisome feature is pancreatitis which should be the answer. Now if they have asked such histopathological image with showing large cell, clear cytoplasm and cluster of calcifications which usually stands for the Samoma bodies which we know it commonly seen in papillary thyroid cancer so for this the coming answer. to CA breast with cerebral metastasis if it is a single meds usually what is the best treatment is surgical resection of that metastasis and I'm not found much material from Bailey or Sabiston but from the article what I've read is that we usually go for a resection if it's a single metastasis and followed by what we should go for a radiation therapy so I think answer should be surgery for this question patient with MRCP image showing a dilated intrahepatic biliary radicals with a cystic duct stone dilated common hepatic duct proximal cbd dilatation and distal cbd normal so this usually points that there is a nearly big stone which is compressing over the common hepatic common bile duct junction which is causing the dilatation in the chd and the proximal cbd so this is a typical scenario for a mirizis syndrome it is not due to any other cause it is always in such cases it should be a mirizis syndrome patient old age with right upper contract hypochondriac pain investigation showing a pericholecystic fluid with a increase in the tlc count with no jaundice or system failure so this usually comes under the moderate cholecystitis criteria 
according to the Tokyo guidelines and the treatment in this is lab coli as early as possible and that is what we do in the clinical practice. If you, if you don't know the Tokyo guidelines, usually if such patient comes to you, we should operate as soon as possible. We don't do enteral cholecystectomy, we go for a lab coli as soon as possible in such patients. PDA is related to, usually if you see the image, it is closely related to the left subclavian artery because it is distal to which there is a connection between the pulmonary artery and the aorta. So it is related to, 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 to the left subclavian artery. Incorrect regarding anion gap. So this formula again I had covered in the electrolyte disturbances chapter. So the formula is sodium minus chloride plus high bicarbonate and not sodium plus chloride minus potassium and bicarbonate. So this is the incorrect option which is the answer. Electrolyte disturbances especially given in shorts is important. They've asked some questions from shorts thyroid breast and from the electrolyte disturbances chapter but majority of the questions other than that are from Bailey and Sapiston. Fecal elastase level in severe pancreatic insufficiency very straightforward easy question given in Sapiston so it is below 100 that is for severe and if it is between 100 to 200 it is mild to moderate and about 200 is normal for a patient if having pancreatic insufficiency between 100 to 200 mild to moderate less than 100 is severe pancreatic insufficiency a patient having ulcerative colitis with primary sclerosing cholangitis what is the investigation choice so usually mrcp is done for the diagnosis and surveillance of this patient and ercp is only done for management purposes for investigation we usually always go for mrcp imaging no other answer mrcp straightforward answer dumping syndrome so if you see the patient having operated for either of the billroth 2 procedure or any kind of whipple surgery or any other gastrojejunostomy usually the least common dumping syndrome is associated with billroth 1 less commonly after billroth 1 or after vagotomy in drainage but usually least common is with Billroth 1 so that is what should be the answer if at all such question is asked. Any patient presenting with intestinal polyps with mucocutaneous pigmentation very straightforward and already discussed this in the must know from GIT that is Peutz-Jäger syndrome. So three or more histologically confirmed polyps with family history or with characteristic mucocutaneous pigmentation given according to the WHO criteria. So in this answer should be Peutz-Jäger syndrome. Endometacin role, we all know it is used most commonly for a patent ductus arteriosus closure. Again, straightforward line from Bailey, not much to discuss in this. Patient with a chest pain following alcohol intact and retching. So this points straightforward to Borzav syndrome. This is taken from Bailey if a patient has vomiting against a closed glottis. So the pressure increases and the esophagus bursts at the weakest point. So the patient having chest pain following alcohol intact and having retching and vomiting against a closed glottis. So this is straightforward for a Borhaf syndrome. GCS, if a patient is having eye opening to voice who is confused and localizes pain. So as I had also mentioned in my videos that GCS is a very important, they ask multiple times. So never forget GCS. So the answer should be 12. That is eye opening is 3. If patient is confused 4 and localized pain then 12. So the answer here is 12. Patient with ulcerative colitis with presenting with jaundice, multiple duct strictures. So this usually points towards primary sclerosing cholangitis. So if you see this is taken from Sabiston. So P PSC is associated with autoimmune disease like ulcerative colitis and radial thyroiditis. I had covered this in the must know topic. Here there is progressive cholestasis and imaging there is characteristic beading and chain of lake appearance. And in this we go for MRCP which will show characteristic multiple focal dilatations and structures. So this points towards PSC no doubt other than this. Protective cell in small intestine, physiology of small intestine given in Sabiston. So only one that is panet cells localized in the crib basis. They protect the stem cells from damage. So the answer would be panet cells. Again, very easy and straightforward. I hope nobody has made mistake in this. Again from Bailey, 
regarding the erythroplasty of curate and bowen so if it is on the glans penis that is a red cutaneous patch that is also known as penile intraepithelial neoplasia if present on glans that is erythroplasia of curate and if on the shaft then it is bowen's disease so erythroplasia of curate is reddish patch on the glans penis spurious morning diarrhea we have been studying from mbbs days very straightforward for ca rectum that is the only disease where we see spurious morning diarrhea Uh, taken from bailey patient having early morning bloody diarrhea that is spurious diarrhea so answer is c a rectum base deficit with increased mortality so this is taken from shorts basically so mild is defined if the base deficit is between 3 to 5 moderate if between 6 to 14 and severe if greater than 15 so according to the best answer should be 7 that is the highest value given so that is associated with a increase mortality a 4 year old child with severe bleeding pr with severe bleeding answer typically points towards a meckels with ectopic mucosa again given in sabiston so most common presenting symptom is a painless massive lower gi bleeding in a child younger than 5 years so if patient presents with a bleeding then it points towards ectopic gastric mucosa which is commonly seen in meckels diverticulum so that is what should we think about in such patients which does not stimulate gastrin very straight forward stecken line from sabiston so it is stimulated by gastric distension gastrin releasing peptide that is bombesin and protein digestion products carbohydrate does not stimulate gastrin protein stimulates more So, so image asked identify the type of biliary injury with the cystic duct clip but the leak from the right posterior sectoral duct usually it is injured so this points typically towards type c injury so this is again a very straightforward and easy question i hope nobody has made mistakes in this so if such image i think which has been asked with scar of a burn injury with a burn contracture in the area affecting the axilla in the chest so in this there's a figure given in bailey in plastic surgery where for similar contracture involving the axilla what they have done is a y v plasty so the best treatment for this disease for a burn contracture over the axilla should be y v plasty no other treatment modality because axilla we have to prolong or extend that area so we do a y v plasty straight forward from the thyroid anatomy given in sapiston so parafollicular cells reach thyroid via the ultimo brinkel body so the lateral thyroid anulge is composed of the cells of the ultimo brinkel bodies and this from this the calcitonin secreting para para follicular c cells arise so para follicular cells reach the thyroid via the ultimo brinkel body so this is about the uh, 40 odd topics which i think i've got the accurate answer so i hope majority of you have answered this correctly and if again you have any discrepancy regarding the answer or the topic question then please let me know i'll correct it in the next session so i hope nobody has made more mistakes and don't worry if you have made mistakes many of you must have made because some questions were tricky some were straight forward some were not given anywhere so don't lose hope all the best and we'll see you in the next session uh, to cover the remaining questions thank you so much for watching